Today I'm going to show you a couple of unique features that allow you to customize your drag and drop interactions. I got a message from Mark who wrote, I wanted to create a game where the learner drags video clips into a specific order on the screen. For example, there would be three individual video clips, beginning, middle, and end, and I want the learner to drag them into the correct order to teach the learner, let's say, what I might call story flow. Crazy, huh? I may be open to using video clips converted to GIF animations if I have to. Any thoughts? Thanks, Mark. Um, it got me thinking that this would be a really interesting example and I honestly, off the top of my head, I didn't know whether an animated GIF would work as part of a drag and drop. So I thought it would be kind of a fun experiment. So I've set up this slide. Uh, do you remember the movie Coming to America? Obviously with most films there's a beginning and a middle and an end. That's just storytelling. So I found three animated GIFs. Uh, on the internet. Uh, I don't own the copyright for these, so obviously, uh, you know, this is just an example. And I'm just going to drag and drop these animated GIFs into my slide here. They're all different sizes, so first thing I'm going to do is resize them and put them in a seemingly random order. So I'm going to grab a smart shape as my drop target. And we'll just roughly draw in a drop target for scene one. Scene two. And I'm just duplicating these here. Scene three. So there we go. I think we've got something that we can work with here. Uh, incidentally, you're going to want to probably have these animated GIFs repeat or loop, if you will. So I'm going to select these and under the timing panel, we're going to display them for the rest of the slide and we're going to make sure that they're set up to loop here. Now, first thing we're going to need to do is identify which items are draggable and which items are the drop targets. So let's first of all open our drag and drop panel here and let's add a drag and drop interaction to the slide. This will create a submit button. I'll actually hide uh, by dragging it into the scrap area down below. I won't be using it. We need to identify which are the drag items. So we're going to say this is a drag source and this is a drag source. And this is a drag source. Similarly, we're going to select our scene one, scene two, scene three drop targets and identify those as drop targets just by using the mark as tool in the drag and drop panel here. Now, because we have three different scenes and three different drop targets, we don't want learners to drag more than one clip into any one of these drop targets here. So we're going to select scene one for starters and go to the format tab of the drag and drop tab. Go into object actions here and we're going to uncheck accept all and we're going to choose replace. And this will only allow one clip to appear in the scene one drop target. And if there's one there already, it will replace it with whichever you're dragging. So we're going to do the same thing for scene two. And scene three. Now looking at this, we can make some setting changes to the parameters under the actions tab. So on success, continue is fine. That's what we'll have happen. Uh, this will automatically pause after one and a half seconds. And we want people to be able to automatically find out that they've got the answer correct when they put them in the right spot there. Alternatively, or in addition, you may wish to include a reset button. That's up to you, of course. That will return everything back to its original location. And uh, under the Options tab, I like to select Redrag the Drop Source. 
So one thing we're also going to need is to be able to set a correct answer. And in this case here, you can do this one of two ways. You can click on the set correct answers button on the options tab and put in the correct answers in this combination window here. Or the easier way is simply select your drag source and draw an arrow to line them up with the appropriate spot here, which is that. And this is producing a success shape, which we're just going to format. And we have a failure shape, but quite frankly, I'm going to allow our learners here to just keep trying this infinitely until they get it right. So we won't ever actually see a failure caption. We will see a success caption. And let's just format that to be appropriate for this layout here. So I think what I'm going to choose is have white text on the same color background as this item here. And we'll just say that's correct. With your captions in a drag and drop, they can display for a set amount of time. So you can change that number by selecting the caption and then navigating over to the timing panel and changing the value here. So I could have this appear for three seconds. Obviously, if I had a whole lot more text, maybe 10 seconds would be more appropriate or 30 seconds or what have you here. So I'm going to leave this for, th for three seconds. I think that's good. And we can position this where the, uh, the items were originally located. So let's just get that to be the appropriate width and centered on the page here. So let's test this out. I think this is pretty much what Mark had in mind here. We'll see how it works. So here we have our scenes, of course. Let's get it wrong. Oh, okay. So we can just keep moving these around until we get the right combination and then we get our correct message there. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.